the Sir Anthony project came about the catalyst for it more than anything else was Terry Christian phoning me up and saying I've got a radio program I've got to do I'm doing about Tony Wilson will you write a poem for it I went off and did loads of research about factory in the Hacienda and Tony and the origins of Tony um, and I knew a lot about it anyway because I was involved in it in a distant kind of way and I got the idea of the A to Z together and being a good Catholic boy as a child my mother always taught me that if I lost anything to say a prayer to Saint Anthony and the whole idea came from the fact that we lost we'd lost Tony now if you say a prayer to Saint Anthony you usually find what you've lost so it was my attempt to say a prayer to Saint Anthony and write an ode to Saint Anthony in an attempt to refind Tony in a way would you like to add to that in any way Jay? <laughs> Well, I think I yeah I listened to it. You you um, you recorded it down your iPhone and sent it to me, and then I was listening to it. And I think one of the two albums that are referenced in the poem, one's Power Corruption and Lies, um, and one's Substance, I think. So I was kind of thinking, well, Spy, would it be good? <laughs> would it be good if, uh, in some way, the music could reference a song from one of those um, one of those albums? So I kind of listened to it. I was thinking, okay, what sort of tempo is it? What sort of speed? The rhythm, the meter, and all that. And thought that um, your silent face from uh, the opening of Side B of Power Corruption Lies would be something that I could reference in there. So I kind of did a version for strings and vibraphone and then cut up your little voice message to me and sort of put spaces in and see if that would work, you know. And yeah. I think I was doing that. Uh, very rapidly on the train and we met up that night in Bristol and I said I think I've got something it's not finished but yeah and you played it mate yeah. I remember you playing it mate. I was I was doing the Colston Hall in Bristol that night with yeah, John Cooper Clark yeah. and you played it mate and I remember weeping at its beauty <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally serious. I do remember weeping. No, no, I do. I remember because, you. because, I just thought there was something wonderful about the way you'd interlock the rhythm of the voice, and the rhythm of what you'd created, and I just thought the um, the synthesis between the two were beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It did, it did. I'm an emotional kind of guy. <laughs> um, I mean, in some ways, it was a lucky guess because it was the first one I tried. But it is one of my favourite songs, so it's kind of. I thought if it if it can work with this, then it'll be great. And if it doesn't work, then I'll try something else. But luckily, it's just you know, like some things you just get straight away. Some things you have to work at for hours. Yeah. And some things just like okay, there's something here. I think we can make this work, but it just needs a bit of shaping. So we were so pleased at what we'd created on an iPhone and a little tape recorder. We decided to go into the studio and do a proper recording of it. So we got the Cassia String Quartet involved and we went into the studio and we made a recording in a day of Saint Anthony. Joe. Well, well and after that, I suppose um, a few people heard it and quite a few, you know, a few influential people heard it and thought that we should, um, you know, put it out as a, a charity single um, for, you know. For Christie's, who looked after Tony in his, um, you know, in his last days, um, so we we thought that was a great idea, and you know, one of those people was, was Bernard from New Order, um, who loved it, and he put his, you know, considerable kind of, uh, you know, influence behind, um, you know, getting it known, um, and you know, and basically getting people down to then be involved in the video, which was Pete from Clute's idea, Pete Jobson. Yeah, so Pete got involved because. He works with Skinny Dog Records and he came up with the idea. When Pete heard it, he fell in love with it and came up with the idea of creating a video. Now, Pete works a lot with Soup Collective in Manchester and they're quite good at what they do in terms of creating videos. They work with Elbow and stuff. And they, Pete came up with the idea of doing a, doing a head to camera, face to camera, reading the poem, lip syncing the poem with my words. So basically, like, the perfect day video that children in need did a few years ago but ours was a lot cooler because ours was a lot uglier 
<laughs> and ugly's cool in Manchester, all right. Also, uh, by this stage, Bernard from New Order had got involved. And Bernard invited us over to the Carnegie Hall in New York to do a performance of St. Anthony as part of the Tibet House Benefit mm -hmm. concert. So uh, Philip and Iggy and the National and Patty Smith and lots of other people seen and heard the poem and loved it and loved it with the music. And it's great because what's really good about it is all these people who've been involved in it I've been passionate about it and wanted to be involved in it. And I think that's part of the fact that it was Tony and that it's for cancer, mm. for Christie's. People who are in the video, my mate Iggy Pop. Philip Glass. John Cooper Clark. Bernard Sumner. Steve Coogan. Chris Eccleston. Terry Christian. <laughs> Mark Radcliffe. Paul Morley. Julie Hesmond Halls, you were going to say then, weren't you? No. All right. Because I can't say a surname. Um, Sean Ryder. Gillian uh, from New Order. Leroy, who used to run the bar downstairs in the Hacienda. Yes, uh, Mike Pickering. Mike Pickering was, in, Mike Pickering was great, isn't it? He did a great wink. <laughs> um, Johnny J. Uh, Stephen Morris. Larry Gott. Peter Saville. Peter Saville was in the video showing the last text message Tony Wilson ever sent. And it was a kiss. Sorry. Um, John Cooper Clark. We've had him. He's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to sleep with the guy. <laughs> Andrew Weatherall. Andrew Weatherall was involved in a video. Um, Philip Glass was involved in a video. Uh, uh, Rowetta. Rowetta. Beautiful Rowetta was involved in the video, as was Julie Hesmond Holsch. And there wasn't many girls in it, was there? Was there? Miranda. Who else? Rowetta. Who else? Richard Maidley. He's not a girl. <laughs> Richard Maidley was involved in the video. He was one of my favourites because he was a proper pro, but Terry was the best lip sinker, I think, than you. That's no, Sean Ryder was the best. But he had to close his eyes and think really hard with his lines yeah. like that, Sean. John Robb was in the video as well. Of course, John, John. Robb. Um, Elvis. <laughs> so the first time I read St. Anthony Live was at the 24 hour conversation about Tony Wilson, a large event held in the centre of Manchester and Peter Saville introduced me. Now we've always been big fans of Peter Saville's work, his album Sleeves of Factory and other people are iconic. And later on on national TV he described, described the poem as genius. So I immediately made friends with Peter Saville, <laughs> recognising his amazing assessment of character and kept in contact with Peter and worked with him in London and it just became so obvious that the sleeve for this had to be done by Peter Saville. So we approached Peter and Peter jumped in with both feet and really wanted to be involved. So he, he took a personal picture photograph taken by Ben Kelly of Tony and used it as the front cover for the artwork. So I suppose the next significant development was Andrew Weatherall um, seeing us perform it live in uh, Fab Faber Social wasn't it in London it and then straight after the, the gig just came up to myself and Mike and just said I want to do a remix of it um, and we said yes because why wouldn't you? Didn't take long no. to make that decision, did it? We'll get back to you, Andrew. But also, he was he was so complimentary about Wilson and the factory thing and the poem and the music. We couldn't refuse. It was beautiful. So I suppose growing up in Salford and Manchester in the 70s and 80s through to the 90s, you couldn't really ignore Tony Wilson and, and his presence, uh, not only on Granada, his, his reporting, but also more crucially for me at least um, is kind of setting up of factory records so all the kind of bands that came from that new order and then later through to the railway children and then happy mondays it was all the kind of time you know that was my youth going to see those bands and buying the records and all that so he was a massive figure um and you know had a huge presence i remember the first time i actually met him well not met him but you know saw him in the flesh was when me and a friend sort of got into the Hacienda to watch New Order 
a little bit underage, shall we say. And he actually came up and stood next to us and kind of peered down and kind of nodded in a, yeah, that's okay. I'm, I'm glad that you've got in here, that you shouldn't be in here, but I'm okay with it. You know, and it was a kind of nice moment. And But that was Tony. And, yeah. uh, and Tony, in lots of ways, was about youth. And to me, to me, Tony was the greatest youth worker Manchester ever had. Because I didn't particularly want to play pool or ping pong. I wanted to be involved in art and film and music. And that's what Factory was in lots of ways in them days. It was a different sort of youth club. And I never actually spoke to Tony. And that's the idea of Tony Talk to me. And even knowing that I never actually spoke to him, he spoke to me in so many ways. And like you said, all the bands that came from there, Tony in a lot of ways was the fulcrum for all that factory scene. But at the same time, let's remember, he was also a bit of a dickhead. And he could be a dickhead at times. Um, the lionisation of Tony Wilson, people seem to forget that he could be a bit of a plonker at times. But that made him, that's what made him more lovable. Because we're all dicks at some time, aren't we? Yeah, especially when he didn't sign my band in the mid nineties, <laughs> which is the time they actually did meet him finally. <laughs> no, that's that's when he sussed out that your band were dicks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he just didn't like the songs. <laughs> but also with Tony, he also had vision in other areas as well because um, he also signed a, a classical composer, Steve Martland, um, who was based in Liverpool, and um, he was the only classical composer to sign the factory and so, someone who I knew briefly at Salford University so and then went on to study with so actually you know Tony had that vision to, to sign that kind of musician as well and that's had a massive influence on on the direction my life has taken as well so what we're hoping people will do is buy the single and donate even more if you want and don't borrow it off your friend and don't illegally download it because if you do you're a tramp <laughs> and you're stealing out of cancer victims mouths because when you buy that single you are donating to Christie's Hospital in Manchester which do all sorts of research into cancer so buying this single in effect could actually save your life yeah and I suppose we also want to kind of you know shine a spotlight on Tony and what he did for this city it's really honourable of your job I just want the money <laughs> <laughs> I just want the toss. No, of course we do. We want to keep Tony's spirit alive, which it is alive. It's alive every day in this city. Um, and you can see it in so many ways. But we we want to reincarnate the man. Um, and make a new generation of people understand who Tony's was, understand who Tony, Tony's influence upon the world. Because we can't just talk about Manchester. We can't just talk about Northwest of England. Tony Wilson, um, s words and actions have influenced the world and the moon.